Hey guys! So, as you've probably all heard, there's this really interesting blue-black dress slash white gold dress thing going around on Facebook and social media. And I thought, as a neuroscience student, I would try and explain to you, as I understand it, why everyone is seeing such completely different colours in the image. Okay, so the first concept I want to explain to you guys is the concept of perceptual boundaries. What is this? Okay, I'll give you an example. So say you've got a red colour, and say it's a really like reddish red. You couldn't argue that's definitely red. We can all agree on that. Then just say you've got an orange colour. It's definitely a very orange right in the middle of red and yellow. It's definitely orange. It's the definition of orange. We can all agree that that's orange. What about if we add a little bit of yellow or a little bit of orange to our red? It gets a little closer to orange, but we'd still agree that this is a pretty reddish red. It's still red. The perceptual boundary is that point between the two colours where if you added a little bit more yellow to the red, it would be orange to some people, or if you added a little bit more red to the orange, it would be red. <laughs> it's right on that line, so it's hard to define whether the colour is red or whether the colour is orange. And there is definitely a line for every person. The second thing I want to explain quickly is how our eyes actually and our brains actually see colour. Basically, colour such as pink, the light or the wavelength reflects off the object through the air, in this case, and into your eye. It travels through the lens of your eye, which focuses the light onto the back of your eyeball, onto the retina. The retina contains specialized photoreceptor cells, or cones and rods, which basically respond to the different wavelengths or the different colors that you see to send information in the form of electrical signals to your brain. Now that sounds really complicated, and when you look at a color, it's so simple to us, it happens automatically. We look at blue or pink and it's just so instinctive, like that's blue, this is pink, you know, black, we're, we're sure that those colors are the colors that they are because our brains tell us that they are. We don't have to think about it, it happens automatically. But what I want you to understand is that when you look at an image, your brain is taking a mixture of colours and you're interpreting that as a solid colour. So let's have a look at the mixtures of colours in that image. Now we all know that the girl's tumbler, she posted another picture of the dress and in reality the dress is blue and black and in the other pictures it's very clearly blue and black. This is just a funny picture of the dress that's been taken where the exposure of the camera or the angle or whatever walls it was taken have put it right on that boundary line between what we see as white and blue and at the same time what we see as black and gold. It's right on that boundary of those colours. So when you look at the Photoshop, it, the image in Photoshop and the pixels in Photoshop, does that agree with this theory? It does. It's got both lighter blue towards white, blue, a little darker blue. It's got some really like dark red tones towards black and it also has some definite brown tones. When you look at the image separately, the pixels separately from the image, you can see definite gold tones in there or brown tones in there as well. So basically it's a mixture of the colours and that's why we're perceiving it differently because some people are at that point in the neurological process the brain is relaying information, the eyes are relaying information to the brain saying okay I found this mixture of colours, it is black and blue and on the other case the brain at that point is saying look at this mixture of colours, it's definitely white and gold. There's one more concept and hopefully this will really make it click for you guys, it'll tie it all together. You might say, that's all well and good, but it really does look gold and white to me. And to other people, it really does look blue. I mean, even if you darken the screen a little, even if you change the white balance, it's still my brain is reading it as those colours. It doesn't make sense what's going on. The third thing is probably the most important. And it is the concept of an optical illusion, which is what the whole world is going crazy about today. And I will explain to you using Wikipedia page, which I shouldn't usually cite, but this just explains an optical illusion so well. Okay. It's characterized by visually perceived images that differ from objective reality. The information gathered by the eye and the retina is processed into the brain to give a perception that does not tally with a physical measurement of the stimulus source. 
Basically, what that is saying is that your brain is tricking you. Because the colours are right on the boundaries of the gold and black and white and blue, your brains are using the light source context to guess what colour the dress is and sending that information to your brain whether or not it's necessarily the actual colours your brain's seeing. It's guessing whether it's a overexposed black and blue image or an underexposed gold and white image. And based on what it thinks in the moment that you first see it, the exposure is, it relays that information and you see the dress as the colour that you see the dress. And I'll show you an example of this light source tricking your brain into interpreting a colour or a shade a particular way in this image. As you can see, you've got two squares, A and B, and they look different because your brain's interpreting one of the squares being shaded by the cylinder and the other square having a different light source. And you can see the line as it connects them, it breaks the optical illusion, they are in fact the same coloured square. The other optical illusion I'll show you is this one of the dogs and believe it or not they are exactly the same colour and this is a good example because it shows your brain how it mixes colour and makes an estimation or it makes an assumption based on the colours around it of what colour it is and that can look very different depending on what colours you initially perceive around the image. Okay, and just one final note, I read an article by Adam Rogers where he interviewed a neuroscientist who studies this subject specifically. The scientist's name was Jay Neitz, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He says the reason that we see colours differently depending on the light source is because from an evolutionary perspective, um, during the morning and during the afternoon, the light source is different and we had to, I guess see colours differently depending on what light was available, probably something to do with hunting or something like that. Um, and also in his article, which I'll link below, he says that due to your initial inter your brain's initial quick, nearly unconscious interpretation of the light source, whether it's overexposed or underexposed, your visual system will correct the image by either looking at it and thinking it's underexposed and eliminating the darker blacks and blues and just assuming that it's an underexposed white and gold image and that's why it has a slightly darker tint to the white colour or your brain interprets it as an overexposed dark blue and black image and your brain actually eliminates the white and gold spectrum based on its initial interpretation of the light source or the exposure which again kind of makes sense. You either correct the colour one way or the other way. Okay, so I hope that was educational and it kind of shone some light on the situation for you guys. Ha ha, I'm really tired. <laughs> um, and I hope you learn a little bit more about neuroscience in the process. See you guys next time. Bye!